Before we get into our video this week, I have some very exciting and important news to share and announce. We at The Print have been working on creating a journalism course, which includes one on science journalism as well. This is a three month long course and we've launched it under The Print School of Journalism. I am a part of the faculty for science journalism and will be giving detailed insights on how to report on science, environment and health. The course will also give you the opportunity to interact with our award winning reporters and journalists. Do apply now, you can find the link in the description below. Now back to our pure science video. Throughout history, being left-handed has always been looked at suspiciously. It's sinister, which literally in Latin is the root for left-handedness and means left or left-handed. And the right hand is dexter. Anything complicated we do with our hands, such as crafts and surgery, requires dexterity, which has positive connotations. Scientists have always wondered what caused someone to be left-handed in terms of genes in their body, because left-handed people have always stood out in society. Researchers have also wondered whether these genes that lead to left-handedness can also affect other aspects of our human bodies biologically or physiologically. Left-handedness has been one of the more enduring but not really widely talked about medical mysteries and there has been a hunt for a hypothetical left-handed gene for a few decades now. Why does left-handedness happen in the first place? Considering all humans with two arms use both of them regularly every day all the time, shouldn't being ambidextrous be more advantages for maximum efficiency of use? But people still tend to remain majorly right-handed these days with some left-handedness. And this has been a question that humans have wanted to answer. And now we have some progress and maybe an actual finding that can start providing answers to centuries-old questions about ourselves. A new study has found rare variants of very specific genes which seem to be associated with left-handedness. This team studied genetic data from over 350,000 people in the UK Biobank, which is one of the largest health and genetic databases in the world. This data had information for over 38,000 left-handed people and over 300,000 right-handed people. The team discovered when going through the data that the people who are left-handed are nearly three times more likely to have variation in a specific gene called TUBB4B, TUB4B. These genes encode for or affect tubulins, a type of protein that make another structure called microtubules. These microtubules are what give cells their shape and they are also important for neuron or nerve cell development as well as for development of cells in the brain. These microtubules affect how the brain develops in early childhood and in fact we already know that left or right-handedness of a baby is already determined in the womb itself. Naturally also in nature and also in our body, there seems to be a predisposed tendency for specific directions or chirality. We know that in biology, even in physics, we have spins and orientation. When we look at DNA, for example, a strand of DNA of any DNA of a living being, all of these twist upwards to the right or in a right-handed manner. And there are some amino acids that are left-handed naturally. Now, among humans, we know that being left-handed is no big deal. Not everyone can use their left hand as well as their right, but right-handed people also know that ambidextrous people and left-handed people are not really the spawn of the devil. There is nothing to fear and everyone is just a regular human. Now, we know this after centuries of right-handed people having to live with left-handed people and noticing that they're just regular. However, while there are right-brain, left-brain myths that still persist to this day, a lot of misinformation, it is established that the brain has two hemispheres and the right hemisphere of the brain controls the left side of the body and vice versa. So, understanding how microtubules and other findings connect to how the brain develops in a human body 
gives us clues into how neurodegenerative diseases develop, such as dementia, Alzheimer's and so on. For example, there are two genes that have been found to be associated with the autism spectrum called DSCAM and FOXP1. These researchers found that those with variations in these genes are more likely to be left-handed. But we already know about nine genes that play an important role in brain neurodegenerative diseases. And when this team studied those nine genes, they did not see any connection with left-handedness. With autism too, it's not that most left-handed people have autism, but it is seen that among those on the spectrum, there is a higher likelihood of left-handedness. This study shows that there could be protein-altering gene variations in left-handed people, and the study also shows the very first steps linking these changes to a part of a system that leads to larger changes in the brain and involving microtubules. These genes are also related to disorders. The team has stated that mapping genes with left-handedness in larger studies along with neurodegenerative disorders will bring out more genes involved in left-handedness in humans. There are more and more such studies coming out in these days. In 2019, a study of 400,000 people discovered four major genes responsible for left-handedness. A year later, another genetic study of nearly 2 million people's data found over 40 genes whose variations directly result in left-handedness. So we are inching closer and closer to zeroing in on what causes left-handedness in humans. While the discourse of the left-handed gene has not always been accepted in the mainstream because of how pseudoscientific it used to sound, it might start to change now in a more responsible manner as we understand more and more minor details about our own bodies.